Good morning, uh, YouTube. It's Jeremy Han, the owner of Video Gamers Oasis YouTube channel. Back again with uh, another uh, video, uh, impromptu sort of uh, uh, stripped down video. This is my second day, day two of my uh, computer in the shop of Canada Computers. Uh, it's being there's a new, there's a new uh, fan, cooling fan with the cooling system being installed with the CPU and just going to give it a quick diagnostic to fix the sound system and I'll be able to get back to my making some really quality video editing and uploading some awesome videos for your enjoyment in the future so it's like four or five days it's day two of the uh, of the lineup of days so I thought you know why not just um, take advantage of some free time that I have without the computer I'm doing a lot of walking a lot of uh, thinking and I figured, why not um, show off, uh, show uh, a tour of my video game collection? You know, that would probably be a good idea since this is a video game YouTube channel. Uh, primarily video game walkthroughs, video game tutorials, as well as educational gamer and geek videos. So, still working on polishing off my presentation, make a little better of a idea of what I want to do. But let's start with looking at my ColecoVision collection. So here we have... These are my ColecoVision games. Now, um, those who you are not familiar with the ColecoVision, it's, uh, it's around the, it, it came around 19, early 80s, um, 1983, 94, uh, just before the Nintendo Entertainment Center became really, really popular. So there's my collection of uh, cartridges. I'll put, put a link in the description showing you a picture of what a ColecoVision game console looks like. But it's a really fun game system. I, I it, it was part of my childhood. It was my second game system that I owned. The previous one I owned was, I believe it was, um, an Atari Twenty Six Hundred, or even the early earlier than that, the the early Atari game system, and uh, also Pong Machine. I also had owned that before that. So, anyways, let's um, let's show off a little bit of my collection here. I'm going to talk about each of my collection of games. I put them in alphabetical order, so they're easier for you to, uh, easy for me to find in order. Uh, that's how my website's going to be. I'm going to have a video game catalog, catalog of games, all in alphabetical order, like an encyclopedia. That's the plan. So, videogamersawaste.com. It's already online, still under construction. So bookmark it for the future. It's going to be really professional looking uh, eventually. So. Please be patient as I work on that. I've been working on my drafts on that. So, back to the ColecoVision games. So we'll start off. Here's my ColecoVision collection, and I'm going to talk about the cartridges that I own. Now these cartridges, um, some of them came with the ColecoVision that my parents bought for me a long time ago. They introduced it to me uh, through the Penny Saver. It's like a newspaper in Canada that where you can. It's like a classified ad, right? Classified paper where you can purchase. People can buy and sell on the newspaper. <clears throat> My parents bought that ColecoVision. It came with games as well. Uh, and also, I purchased some games from a uh, second-hand thrift store called Value Village, as well as some at uh, Goodwill Industries. <clears throat> Big shout-out to those companies. They do a lot of good work for people. So here's the game that I want to talk about first, is Cosmic Avengers. Let's see, it's got a little lighting on that. Cosmic Avengers, Cosmic Avenger, and that is um, 1981 Universal Co. It's sort of a space, it's a space game, a shooter, a kind of like uh, Radius, not quite the Radius, a face, a sort of a space, um, it's upward, you know, bird's eye view of the, of the ship. And um, I haven't played that for enough to tell you enough about it. I probably, want, I probably want to do some ColecoVision Let's Plays, uh, even if even if I have to use an emulator, because these are really good games. But this one I'm not overly familiar with, so I'll have to look more into that one. Next we have 1984's Coleco Cabbage Patch Kids. Now before you get all uppity on me and get all judgmental, this is a video game that's very very hard. It's 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 as uh, difficult, if not more, than Super Mario Brothers. Uh, 
the character is a superhero, not superhero, character is a girl, okay, a, a doll character, and she has to jump over obstacles and, in a park, in Baby Lane Park, and it starts off really easy, you jump, it's a lot like Jumpman, a lot like um, Donkey Kong in some ways, it's a lot like, uh, you know, uh, you may have heard of, um, there, there was like a game where, where you can swing from vine to vine like a like a Indiana Jones kind of character name escapes me um, but um, I, I, I liked it a lot in fact it get it gets de more difficult the further you go the there's a bouncing ball that that you have to jump over well the every level you go the ball bounces higher and higher to the point where you can't even jump over it. And that's bizarre, how they would make a game so difficult that you can't beat it. So what I did is I kind of, I went the opposite direction and when I played it, and the ball would chase the character. And I found that kind of amusing, how, um, how you could almost hack around with the game, um, where, all, where you get to the point, where there was also a bee, you have to uh, overcome a bee that chases you. It's just a fun game, you know? Try it yourself. It is fun. It's very retro arcade style. Um, I have two copies of Donkey Kong, like I was mentioning. This is, uh, by the way, it's 19, uh, 1981 Nintendo of America. One of the first uh, appearances of Super Mario. Actually, not Super Mario. His name was Mario. He was a regular plumber in this game. And he had to rescue his girlfriend Pauline from the... King Kong like ape, Donkey Kong. Interesting story about Donkey Kong um, from what I've heard is that uh, when the Jap Japanese uh, wanted to translate the name into English, they misspelled, they wanted to make, call him Monkey Kong and instead they called him Donkey Kong. It was a mispronunciation or, or misspelling, loss in translation, but the name stuck. And we know instantaneously when you think of Donkey Kong, you immediately, your your visual cortex uh, immediately knows what to look for. So, a lot of fun. It's three levels. Um, Donkey Kong involves Mario has to jump across, you know, jump over barrels. Uses hammers. You can help use. You can you can optionally use hammers to smash the barrels. You climb up ladders. You climb to the top of the the girder like a almost like a like a uh, roller coaster girder or construction girds and you have to rescue the girlfriend and the second level you have to go you have to cross uh, rivets you um, basically cross them you jump over them or you can cross them and there are fireball creatures that chase after Mario and when you and you have to, you can also pick up optionally um, Pauline's hats uh, purse and umbrella you get extra points for picking up her goodies that she left, you know, valuables. So, uh, and on the third level, you uh, you you can use elevators to elevate Mario on different uh, plateaus, and you have to be careful because if you you're not careful, you'll fall down into the to the abyss. So, and uh, I, I was able to I was able to make it past the third level several times when I remember playing it. There were times I got so frustrated I would scream and sh and scream and yell just like uh, the angry video game nerd would in his videos so um, probably wouldn't do that these days I've kind of mellowed out over the years a lot of fun excellent arcade style game highly recommend ColecoVision's Donkey Kong a lot of fun even today even though it's retro style and limited in its graphics then we have Donkey Kong Jr. now Donkey Kong Jr. is another fun game it's a sequel to Donkey Kong and it, it involves not Mario, but uh, Donkey Kong Jr., the son of Donkey Kong. And he has to rescue his father from, this time, the villain, Mario. Mario is a villain. And he's releasing all these weird cre critters, these creepy crawlers that are coming to, to get the, the ape. And he has a swing from vine to vine in this game. It's different. It's not, more, not the same as, as Donkey Kong 1, but it's more, a lot of swinging from vine to vine. And I, had, I haven't played it enough times to really appreciate it, but I, from what I did enjoy it on the ColecoVision, it was fun. I remember seeing it for the first time at a hotel 
I remember uh, I saw a friend of mine playing Dog Young Jr. and he was having such a good time. He was really advancing the game, and uh, I was admiring how well he was doing. He was really uh, a good player. So it's a great game, Donkey Kong Jr., the sequel to Donkey Kong. It's our collection I have. And we have Frogger. It's an unusual, unusual casing. It is, uh, what year was this? It's hard to read. 1982. Milton Bradley, I believe. Uh, it's hard to read it, but anyways, that's Frogger there, and we, you know, that's on the ColecoVision, and many of you are familiar with Frogger. Uh, many of you know, it's still you can still get it on apps or whatever. Uh, the frog. It's well, always wondered why. Why would a frog drown? It doesn't make sense. But apparently, that's one of the pitfalls Frogger has to go through, as well as crossing the street, dangerous cars coming back and forth, and he has to sit on a lily pad and um, get himself all comfy. So, a uh, you know, I, I like this game. It's arcadey. I haven't played enough to really appreciate it. But I like to do some Let's Plays of that video as well, of that video game. Yeah, I really love the arcade style games. There's something very nostalgic about them. There's a simplicity to them that is just so rare, and they're fun. They're fun because they're simple. <laughs> I guess that's why I like them. Uh, they're just, there's something very cartoony about it. Frogger, our game I have in my collection. And then we have Mousetrap. Actually, actually, we'll look at that. Next, we, we have um, in alphabetical order, we have Ladybug. Now, two copies of Ladybug. I have this um, high-resolution cartridge for the CBS ColecoVision console, Universal's uh, Ladybug. And we have another version, 1981 Universal Co. So there's different, just different packaging. And, uh, yeah, basically, it's, uh, it's like Pac-Man. You, you have to guide your Ladybug character around the maze. Um, I, I haven't played it for a long time, so I can't tell you too much. But again, I'd like to do a Let's Play of that game in the future. So stay tuned for that. We have Qbert. Um, sorry, that is not alphabetically ordered. First, we have Mousetrap. Now, Mousetrap is another, it's 1981 Exidy. Another Mario, st uh, not a Mario, another Pac-Man style game, and Mousetrap is great because uh, you'll, the, the game originally came with a sliding template that you could put on your controller that allowed you to identify certain buttons, certain controls. You can go left, right, up, down, and you could open gates. You could change the maze. You could actually change the maze. That's different than Pac-Man. Another thing is that you could, at certain t points of the game, you could I press the center button, I believe, of the, of the ColecoVision controller, you could transform your mouse into a dog because you're chased by cats, okay? If you're not careful, you'll get devoured by the cat. You have to eat cheese to, to power up, I guess. But if you'd, um, you can also transform into a dog and chase the cats. So that's a lot of fun. That's a fun game. Now, back to Qbert. Um, it is um, 1980s, 83, I believe. Anyway, I uh, have to look, look that up. Um, for you, probably put some information in the video below. But Qbert's a lot of fun. I love this game. I remember playing this in arcade. I remember going to Frankenmuth with my, with my parents, and I would, <laughs> I would have fun just getting hit on the head by the balls. Uh, and I would, and Qbert would swear. He would, it would look like he was swearing. It'd be like a bubble come out of his mouth, and all these uh, expletive, expletives would come out. But they were not swear words. They were just uh, symbols like question mark, uh, asterisk exclamation point but it's a lot of fun because it, you you have to match you have to change all the colors of these these boxes in a triangle you have, to, you have to change all the colors while you're being chased by bouncing balls coiled snake uh, some kind of warthog purple warthog creature with two legs another uh, a two gr green a, a, a green two green twins of these little grim, little elf creatures and uh, you're always on, 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 you know, at the risk of falling off as well. So it's a lot of fun. I love this game. It's like a puzzle a game. And the m further you get in this click version version, the more difficult it became. So it actually becomes very, uh, the, the, the replay value of this game is very high for our click version game. Really great game. And what else do we have here? Okay. 
We have Rocky Super Action Boxing for the ColecoVision and Adam. I love this game. It's 1983 United Artists. And it's a lot of fun because what happens is basically you get to play as Clubber Lang or as Rocky in the 1982-83 um, version of Rocky 3. And I, I, I love the game even though I didn't fully enjoy it to the full potential because you need a special kind of joystick that I didn't get. And I'm probably going to get it someday. I'd like to play it just the way it was meant to be. Uh, the ClickoVision and Atom family computer system, you can get the special kind of, uh, it's called a Super Action Controller set. And you can play either as Clubber Lang or as Rocky. It's a great game. I love the, the, the introduction. You know, you get to see the big graphic of Rocky. Um, with the Rocky banner. Pretty good high resolution for a ColecoVision machine. And uh, the actual ring was good. The actual game. You get to ha see the um, the referees in the middle. You know, and it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. The crowd cheers you. And for a very retro, you know, limited graphic. Uh, Resolution. It's a lot of fun. Very fun to look at. It's very cartoony, and uh, but yet realistic in in, in its own way. Um, I recommend the, the ColecoVision Rocky. Then we have the Smurf. Smurf Rescue in Gargamel's Castle. That is 19, 1982 Coleco. And uh, it's again, it's like a, it's a bit of like a platformer, similar to Cabbage Patch Kids or Donkey Kong. You have to lead your character, your hero, the Smurf, across the, the landscape while these creatures come and get you, spiders and creep crawlers. And at the very end, you get Gargamel. And you ba I remember winning the game. And uh, you have to rescue Smurfette from Gargamel. A lot of fun. And just a bit of a, you know, you may want your kids to, uh, or your, your kids to leave. Well, I'm going to tell you this. There's a little bit of a secret in the game. If you enter the room where... Smurfette is, spoiler alert, and you le immediately leave and then come back and leave and come back and do it again and again. Well, what happens is, this is a, bit, a little bit, the, the designers inter uh, kind of inserted this little uh, Easter egg in the game is basically Smurfette will pull a dress up. You don't get to see much because it's not very high resolution, but it's very uh, risque for a, for a ColecoVision game, I must say. So... I know you didn't probably didn't expect to hear that, but I just wanted to mention that. Smurf for the Caligula Vision. Still a fun game. And you don't have to explain that to your kids until they're old enough. And uh, we have Space Space Panic 1980 Universal. And that's another game I, I, I started to get into uh, later on in my life. Not not uh, as soon as not as recently. Not as old as I not when I first came got it. Uh, the Caligula Vision. The space Panic is a lot like Dig Dug. You're a spaceman, you're an astronaut, and you have to basically, um, basically, you 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 take these, you dig holes, and you're chased by these alien space mutant monster creatures that come after you, and the longer you wait, the the more they mutate. So you have to get rid of them. You have to dispel them quickly. So you can dig holes. They can you can trap them in the ground, and you can bury them again, I guess. You have to be careful that you don't get eaten by the creatures or you fall down as well. That's, and the music's really cool. It kind of has an echo sound, echo electronic sound to it. And it, it, sometimes if, if you didn't put the cartridge in correctly, the music would get really funky, really far out, especially if you're high or something. I don't know if you can't see I have, but, but, but um, it's a lot of fun uh, game. Space Panic for the Caliga Vision. Then we have Space Fury, another great game. It's a kind of an arena game, a space arena. So you're in the beginning of the game. I remember playing. It was the first game my dad was playing, and I first saw it for the first time, the ColecoVision. And you're visited by this green-faced alien with a with a third eye. He actually had a one eye. He's a Cyclopean monster uh, commander, and he's challenging the player to a battle. He says, "Prepare for battle, human Earthling, for my amusement." And so you battle these spaceships that all, all gang up on you. And 
you can't leave the room, the, the the area. It's very much like asteroids. You go up, down, left, right, and you come out the other end. So you're kind of trapped in a time warp. And the spaceship can, um, the the other spaceships can also group together and get bigger, much like Voltron or like uh, Mighty Marvel Power Ranger, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And so can you. The, you can at some point in the game you can choose four motherships, each having their own different shooting capabilities or different direction of, of, of blasts, and you can join with the mothership and get become more powerful and beat all these other ships that come after you. And only after you get defeated by the aliens, the green-headed uh, commander, he then comes back on the screen and says, well, well, you know, either if you did a great job, he says, great job, you know, you have been a very diff a stimulating opponent. But if you did a very bad job, he said, you are a pathetic opponent if you got defeated in the first level. So it's really fun to have this alien uh, commander uh, jive you or kind of, uh, kind of, um, it's fun to see him either, pro either um, you know, evaluate you, he's like judging you. It's a lot of fun for a ColecoVision game to have an alien commander, you know, big face right in the whole screen, especially if you have a big screen TV, just judging you, your performance, a lot of fun. Great game. I'd recommend it. Then we have Subrock. This is Sega, 1982 Sega Enterprises. R wow, I love this game. I remember playing hours and hours of this game. It's a lot of fun. And it got really thrilling to the point where it almost got really uh, tense. Where you, uh, you play, uh, you're playing first person in a, in a submarine and you can aim your missiles or your torpedoes either at ships in the water or as uh, spaceships or airplanes or even... Um, Mother ships that come at you, uh, mystery ships they have. So you, you, you blast them, and what happens is that if you get hit, you know, you get a whole screen blows up. Whole screen, you know, gets big orange color. And uh, it's a lot of fun because you can, you can also get bonus points for hitting the mystery ship, usually a, a ship that's in shadow. And um, at the end of each level, at the end of each level, you get to fight the mother ship, which is a giant. Uh, looks like a giant flying saucer, giant one with uh, with force fields that block you, which is a lot awesome. It's awesome as well, is that you can you can battle the spaceship and it actually resists you, which is a lot of fun for a Galactic Vision. Sega Subrock, really get that game. It's really good from Galactic Vision. And our game is Tarzan, the Ape Man. It's 1980. 84, 83, Edgar Rice Burroughs, based on the Edgar Rice Burroughs comic book hero, superhero. Love this game so much. I remember playing it again. There's four different uh, power, it, it's, there's four different um, difficulty levels that you can play as um, to, to increase the difficulty. So you're, you're the, basically the art ape man going through the jungle, running through the jungle. You can also jump on trees, climb up trees, swing from vine to vine, swim in the ocean, in the water, lakes. You can battle crocodiles, Gimla, and you can also battle apes, or gorillas, come after you to attack you to Tarzan. There's snakes that, if you're not careful, get poisoned to death. But you can also, uh, there's a power bar, right? You don't die immediately. You can jump on the snake. You need to rescue your, your little monkey friend, uh, Cheetah, I believe. or give, uh, um, And you rescue him from the cage that's being held by this hunter. The hunter never dies, no matter how many times you punch him. He'll keep coming back up. He just, he's like, uh, he's, he just, you can't keep a good hunter down. And uh, he just keeps back, getting back up. But if you go, keep moving on after you rescue the monkey, the monkey will, will warn you whenever there is a snake. Because the snake always has yellow eyes, little X's in the jungle. So uh, he warns you, but if, you, if you're not careful, Tarzan will uh, get too close to some bananas. And the uh, little ape, little... Cheetah will actually get seduced by the bananas and eat eat them and will abandon, betray Tarzan, leave him. So you have to be careful. So you go through there and you can rescue some ape men trapped in cages by these um, beast men, I believe they're called. They're like half man, half ape. And um, at the end of the game, you go to a temple. It's a lot of fun. I love the temple the most. And the temple is like a pyramid shaped and there's like apes trapped in the um, in the cages while you and you have to punch out the the beast men that guard the cages. You get to the top of each level. There's vines, and you, you got to watch out for there's a t there's a temple um, idol that shoots fireballs from you from his eyes, as well as 
uh, when you get all the apes rescued, uh, he starts breathing fire. And then you, what Tarzan needs to do is go, ah, at the very big, top of the pyramid, and he and the idol gets slammed down. So it's a lot of fun. High recommend for the Caliga Vision. Great game. And then we have, uh, wow, Zaxxon. I remember this game. I got two copies, actually. <laughs> I don't know how I got, probably got, went, bought them two of them in a, in a kit. So ColecoVisions uh, is uh, 1982 Sega Enterprises. It's a, one of the first 3D uh, retro games for the Sega and for the ColecoVision. It's a spaceship. It's kind of an airplane, kind of a top gun ship, but it's spa in space. And you go through these space islands uh, fighting off uh, robots, missiles, uh, you know, floating robot, like mushroom creatures, ro mushroom machines. You shoot, you know, uh, lasers at the hero, and you can shoot tank uh, tanks of, of, of fuel to, t to fuel up your car your ship, so you can get power up. And at the very end, you fight Zaxxon, this big robot, floating robot, whoa, 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 whoa. And uh, there was always a, a trick that I made it managed to find is that if you shoot the the missile before it shoots at you, you actually defeat Zaxxon and he turns gray. But if you don't shoot the, the missile before it fires, he, you destroy the missile, you win the game, but Zaxxon lives. He just backs away. So you have to like, to really destroy Zaxxon, you have to destroy the missile while it's still in his chest. Ah, oh, I love this game so much. It's a lot of fun. Very fun uh, retro style arcade game. It, that's for the ColecoVision. And finally we have Z Zenji. Zenji, I don't think it's 1984, 85. It's Activision game, but it works for the ColecoVision. And I remember going um, with my par my parents, we went with my dad when I was a kid. We went to the Kmart, as Walmart is now now. And we went to the video, the video game store part and to look for some game. Look at a game from the ColecoVision. I got Zenji. And it looked kind of creepy for, for a puzzle. It's a puzzle game. Basically, you're like a character, like a funny face that goes through a circuit, electric circuit, and you have to put the circuits together so that they work properly and you're being chased by, by anthropomorphic sparks that come that chase after a little funny face. And the music, you know, and you, you, the, the, gradually the mazes get bigger and bigger as you progress and they actually, when you run out of time, the music speeds up, so you're you're pressured to get that to get that game to get that level um, complete. Well, when I first got the game, when I was about to buy the game, my dad was like concerned because you know we grew up in a Christian household. We were oh, it looked kind of occult. Ooh, it's scary looking. It was it's a guy with a puzzle piece, but it looked kind of occult. And like my dad back then, it was back then. He says went to the store owner says you know. Uh, is there anything demonic about this game? He said, "No, no." Man. The, the store, the store um, clerk says, "It's just a, it's just a puzzle game. That's all. It's a puzzle game." Man, those days, uh, I couldn't live properly, <laughs> always being afraid of what to buy, you know. But I bought the game, and boy, oh boy, was it a fun game. It's still fun. I want to play this game as a let's play someday, just to bring out back, bring back the arcade style fun, um, the light of this game. Zenji for the Activision. Really good game. It's, it's, and you can almost learn a little bit about how to do circuits, how to do electricity, uh, how to be an electric, electrician in this game. Positive and negative, you know, circuit loops. So that's, that's the collection, guys. There you have it. There you have it. These are my ColecoVision games. And I'm so happy to have time to uh, show, to talk about them. Probably going to have another talk about, um, I mean, Nintendo collection another day. So if you enjoyed this video, would you be so kind as to like it, favorite, comment, share with all your friends, tell, me, tell all your friends about these ColecoVision games that I have. I have a lot of fun with these games. I still do. I, I love um, the, the retro arcade style of them. Something very rare. You very, you maybe, maybe you could find games like this on Steam, but it's hard to find games like this everywhere. And... Uh, Subscribe to Video Gamers Oasis if you like this video, and um, you'll be notified of future videos. More Mages Initiation coming back 
to you when I get my computer back, I'm installing a new computer's um, CPU cooling fan. Thanks for watching. Take care of each other gamers, YouTube fans, collectors, newcomers to Video Gamers Oasis. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Bye.